So here we're going to look at multiplying fractions. Um, fractions uh, such as down below here, 3 quarters and 8 ninths. Um, if we're asked to multiply 3 quarters by 8 ninths, um, the technique here um, is, is different to the technique we use when we're adding or subtracting fractions. Um, but it's very straightforward, in fact. Um, so to multiply fractions, all you do is you multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators and you get uh, an answer. So what is 3 times 8? 3 8 is 24. And on the bottom, 4 times 9 is 36. And there's our answer, 24 over 36. Isn't that easy? However, however, um, we should always ask ourselves that key question, can I simplify my answer? And in this case, you can, of course. Because 24 and 36, uh, you should notice, are both even numbers, and you can certainly halve them uh, to get 12 over 18. And then you should be able to recognize that you can go again here, because 12 and 18 are also both even numbers, and therefore they can definitely both be halved as well. That would give us 6 over 9. And actually, 6 and 9 are both multiples of 3, aren't they? They're both in the 3 times table. Uh, 2 3s make 6, and 3 3s make 9. So actually, our final answer is 2 thirds. And that's the fact, if you look at uh, our original answer here, at 24 to 36, you'll notice that if we had just simply divided by 12 in the first place, that would have got us straight to our final answer of 2 thirds. Um, but yes, in short, to multiply fractions, all you have to do is multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators and simplify your answer. However, however, there is a, um, an easier way of getting straight to our final answer of two thirds. Uh, and here it is. Instead of doing all that simplifying at the end, which could be a bit, a bit, a bit troublesome, um, what you can do is this. You can do some cancelling at the beginning. And um, you'll remember um, simplifying fractions involves um, cancelling down the numerator and the denominator of that fraction by the, by the same common factor. Um, we can, can cancel here by finding any numerator and any denominator on the multiplying, any numerator and any denominator that have a common factor. So, for example, here, the numbers 4 and 8 can both be divided by 4, can't they? If we divide 8 by 4, we get 2. If we divide 4 by 4, we get 1. And we also should notice that here we have a 3 and a 9 that can both be divided by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And now we have no more numerators and denominators with a common factor. So we simply do what we did in the first instance. We multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. 1 times 2 on the top is 2. And on the bottom, 1 times 3 is 3. And lo and behold, there we go. We get the answer that we got the first time now. But we get it without having to deal with um, such big numbers as we had to deal with uh, the first time through. Let's look at another example. Here's one. 10 over 13 times 39 over 40. We could do 10 times 39 um, and 13 times 40 and then cancel down. Um, but let's see if we can do any cancelling here before we do all that. Are there any, is there a numerator and a denominator that you can see that have a common factor? I'm hoping that you'll notice that this number and this number, the 10 and the 40, are both multiples of 10, aren't they? Let's divide them both by 10 to get 1 and 4. Is there another numerator and denominator that can cancel down? Well, yes, there is. The 13 and 39 are both multiples of 13, aren't they? Let's do that then. Any more cancelling possible? No. So we do 1 times 3 on the top gives us 3, and 1 times 4 on the bottom gives us 4, and we get a final answer of 3 quarters, which can't be simplified. Let's go again. 10 over ooh, 10 over 17 times 51 over 55. Okay, so far our common factors have always have, have always been uh, one of the numbers that we actually had in part of the fraction. Um, let's look here. Um, 10 and 55 do have a common factor, don't they? You can't divide them by 10. Obviously, you can't divide them both by 55. But you can divide them both by 5, can't you? 10 divided by 5 gives us 2. And 55 divided by 5 gives us 11. Uh, how about the 17 and the 51? Do they have a common factor? Well, 17 is a prime number, isn't it? So it only has itself and 1 as factors. But 51 actually is in the 17 size table, isn't it? 3 51s make 17. So we can divide them both by 17. Which is 1 there and 3 there. And now we multiply our numerators and our denominators. 2 times 3 is 6. And the bottom 1 times 11 is 11. And we 
simplify our answer? No, we can't. We don't. You will find that if you do all the simplifying as possible, you won't be able to simplify your answer. But if you leave some of your simplifying out, then there will be some... If you leave all your counting out, I should say, then there will be some work to do at the end. Um, 12 over 19 times... Let's go with 38 over... This is an ugly one. Let's not go with 38. Let's go with 57. 57 over 72. How about that? No, let's not go with that. Not a bad one. Oh, we'll do it. 57 over 72. Um, hold on, it'll be for now. 19 and 57. Both multiples of 19. 1, 19 is 19. 3, 19 and 57. How about 12 and 72? Well, I reckon 12 and 72 are both multiples of 12. Because 1 times 12 is 12, and 6 is 12 of 72, aren't they? So there we go. Let's multiply those numerators and denominators. 1 times 3 is 3. And denominators 1 times 6 is 6. We get an answer of 3 over 6. Can we simplify 3, 6? Why, yes we can. So they're both multiples of 3. We can get 1 over 2 as our final answer. And how come we were able to simplify our answer? That's right, in actual fact, after we've done all the other work that we've done over here with our cancelling, we could have cancelled down our 3 and our 6 here to get ourselves straight to our final answer of 1 half without being to bother with this bit. But we didn't. And it's not the end of the world if you do miss a bit of cancelling um, accidentally. Uh, on the way through. It's not the end of the world, as long as when you do get to your answer, you do say, can I simplify? And you do notice that you can. <laughs> as long as you do that, it's not a major train smash. Okay, so how might um, multiplying fractions um, come into play in a word problem? Well, let's look at a question. Um, James eats one quarter of a cake. What is left? This is part A, by the way. This is not the whole thing. Um, here's a cake. James eats one quarter of it. That is one quarter gone. If he had eaten one quarter, what have we got left? We've got one, two, three quarters left. So I reckon our answer will be he had three quarters of the cake left. Plus one quarter plus three quarters makes four quarters, which makes the whole cake. So moving on to the second part of the question, Paul eats two thirds of what is left. How much does he get? Right, so Paul eats two-thirds of what is left. How much cake was left? We decided that three-quarters of the cake was left, didn't we? Three-quarters of the cake. Okay, and Paul eats two-thirds of that. Paul eats two-thirds of three-quarters of the cake. How much did he get? Well, this is a word problem, and this is where your brains have got to start working a little bit. Because it's not there on the plate for you. You've got to understand what two-thirds of three-quarters means. It does two-thirds of three-quarters mean? mean two-thirds take away three-quarters? Well, does two-thirds of three-quarters mean two-thirds plus three-quarters? No, we're not adding two-thirds of the cake onto three-quarters of the cake, are we? Um, two-thirds of three-quarters, you should know, is a bit like saying half of something or a quarter of something. If you find a quarter of something, you're timing that something by one quarter, aren't you? Um, so when we're looking for two-thirds of three-quarters, we're looking for two-thirds times three quarters. Two thirds times three quarters. If we look at it as a multiplication problem, uh, can we do any cancelling? Well, yeah, we can. We we'll want the two and the four can both be divided by two, and the three and the three can both be divided by three, and one times one on top is one, and one times two on the bottom is one half. So it turns out that our man Paul seems to get one half of the total well, that's an interesting answer. Who'd have thought it? Um, there we go. That's how you can multiply fractions in a word problem. Um, you just multiply in the same way you always multiply them. Uh, just finish off with a summary. Um, here's, a, here's a question so that we can illustrate uh, some of our work that we've done. Um, 5 8 times 4 over 15. Okay. What we look to do when we're multiplying fractions is step 1. Can we do any cancelling? In this case, yeah, we can. We can divide the 4 and the 8 by 4. We can divide 5 to 15 by 5. Step 2 is multiply numerators and denominators. 
nature. So in this case, 1 times 1 is 1 up here, and 2 times 3 down here is 6. We here get an answer of 1, 6. And having done that, the third and final step should be to ask yourself, can I simplify? And if you've done all the cancelling that you could have done in step one, then uh, the answer should be no. But um, it's always worth asking yourself just in case to see whether or not you've missed something. Three easy steps to multiply fractions.